Stop praying. It's kind of rainy outside, but I feel the rain of the Spirit on the inside. So come on in as we get ready for service. Yes, God. with your name on it. Well, I want to say good morning to everybody. I greet you in the precious name of Jesus. I trust that you've had a wonderful week. And even if you did not, God is still God. And all things work together for the good to them that love him, to those who are the called according to his purpose. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know, since the last time we worshiped together, a lot has happened. If you've been keeping up with the news and, and all of the different things that's taking place, it seems like things are getting worse instead of getting better. But you know, the Lord dropped that in my spirit a long time ago that it would get worse before it gets better. But for the saints of God, we've got to hold on to our faith and continue to trust the God of our salvation. He's going to get us through this. But I'm so excited today because I know that God is still God. And the Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love him to those who are the called according to his purpose. So God bless all of you today. I'm Bishop Norman Hutchins, the senior pastor of Frontline Ministries right here in the beautiful city of Dover, Delaware. And I want to greet each and every one of you for tuning in on today praise and we thank God for our frontline family and we thank God for our social media family. Those of you that are watching by Facebook or by Instagram or whatever means, you may be tuning in to this station. The Bible says where there are two or three, touch it and agree. It didn't say we had to be in the sanctuary, we just had to touch and agree. My God, and I touch with you today, you touch with me today and I believe that God has a word for us on today. And so as we prepare for worship, I want you to just come on, bring your minds in. Relax. Let's get in a mode of worship so that we can receive what God has for us. 
You know, usually that's what we do with praise and worship. Praise and worship is designed to, to help usher in an atmosphere of worship so that we can be spiritually prepared to receive the word of God. And so I want us to prepare to receive the word of God. But let us pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we honor you. We bless you. And we praise you for this day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you for your people that have come together today as we worship you and as we glorify you. Father, I'm asking you today that you would reveal God yourself like you've never done it before. Speak to us through the word of God. Let it penetrate our hearts. Let it minister to our spirits in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for being a very present help in the time of trouble. We thank you, God, for supplying all of our need according to your riches and glory. You've been such an awesome God. And our faith stands firm in you. Bless you now. God, we pray for any family that has been affected by this crisis. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray, God, for those, dear Lord, who are grieving even right now. And I pray, God, that something will be said today that will strengthen them and that will help them and that will encourage them in the name of Jesus. For well, God, you are a very present help in the time of trouble. You're not a coming help. You're a present help. That means you're already there. And you're here right now. And so, God, we lift you up and we magnify your name and we praise you. Continue to bless every church, every pastor, God, that's ministering to their congregations on today. Lord, let them speak a word that will bless their congregations to keep us together in unity. Well, God, because we know that there will be glory after this. And so for this, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. My God, my God. I tell you, I feel the presence of the Lord. I really feel the presence of the Lord. But as we prepare for the word that God wants to share with us today, come on, let's 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 sing a little bit. You you know, even if you can't sing, nobody's gonna know because you're home by yourself, all right? <laughs> so you can sing along with us. Thank God for our minister of music, uh, our assistant pastor, Pastor Troy Chambers. You know, he's been helping me out with uh, putting together uh, the music for these uh, services. And so we thank God, amen, for him. But come on, everybody. Let's sing. Let's sing. Let's sing to the Lord today. And let's worship. You know this song. Come on.
Just hear you singing at home in my spirit. My God, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Hosanna to God. My God, hallelujah. I will bless him. I will praise him. I will glorify him. You know, praise is a weapon that you use in troubled times. That's what you've got to do. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. God bless you. All right, well, listen, I hope you have your Bible ready and you're ready to go with me to the Word of God. Amen on today. I'm excited about what the Lord has planted in my spirit to share with you. Amen on today. And I pray that you've already tagged somebody. I pray that you started a listening party or you've called your family, your friends. You say, hey, wake up, get up. It's time, it's time for the Word of God. Amen on today. And so as we prepare, amen, to share with you today, we're just praising God, amen, for this time, amen, of worship and this time, amen, in the Word of God. And also, of course, uh, from uh, our co-pastor, Lady Karen Hutchins, uh, she sends her love to everybody. And then, of course, our assistant pastor, Pastor Troy Chambers, amen, he sends his love to everybody. And, of course, we thank God for all of our deacons, and uh, we thank God for all of the department heads and the leaders of our church. And we're just praising God that in, in the midst of all of this, God is still keeping us together. And that's the most important thing. Amen. A family that prays together stays together. And I know you're praying for me and, and I'm praying for you. And in the midst of all of that, God is keeping us together. And I want you to stay tuned because I have a very, very important announcement uh, to share with you after I minister uh, the word of the Lord on today. Okay, so if you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to our text. We're going to be ministering from the book of Acts, chapter number 16. And we're going to begin reading at verse number 23. All right. The book of Acts, chapter number 16. And we're going to begin reading at verse 
number 23. And this is what he says. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stalks. The next verse says, and at midnight, I want you to remember that word right there, midnight. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Three things they did. They prayed, they sang song, and apparently they were singing loud enough that the prisoners heard them. The next verse says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. My God, I love that story. That's, that's one of one of my favorite, favorite stories in the Bible because it demonstrates the power of prayer and the power of worship. But I want to talk to you today from this subject, the darkest hour before daybreak. The darkest hour before daybreak. Yes, God put that in my spirit and he says, I want you to talk to my people today and, and explain to them, yes, we may be in a dark hour, but daybreak is coming. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the darkest hour before daybreak. Well, in our text in verse uh, number nine, it teaches us that Paul had a vision. And in this vision, he saw himself ministering Jesus Christ in Macedonia. And so him and Silas went down into Macedonia. And they start preaching and teaching Jesus Christ. And leading people to God through salvation. But then in the same text, in verse number 16, uh, one day they were on their way to prayer. And while they were on their way to prayer, the text says a damsel who was possessed with a spirit of divination, who brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Kind of like a fortune teller. She saw Paul and Silas, and the text says she began to follow them. And as she followed them, she cried out, These are the servants of the Most High God. And then she also says, Not only are they the servants of the Most High God, says, but uh, these, are, these are, the, uh, are, are those who lead us in the way of salvation. It's amazing to me that Paul and Silas did not announce themselves. They did not tell the damsel who she was, the spirit. They didn't tell the spirit who, who they were. But the spirit recognized who they were. The spirit in the, spirit in the, in the girl says, uh, these are the men. They are, these are the servants. Of the most high God. You know that tells me that tells me that, that Satan knows who you are in God. Don't you fool yourself. The devil knows. On another occasion, uh, uh, a spirit said, uh, Paul I know and Jesus I know, but who are you? You see, because the spirit recognizes who is really in God. But anyway, 
And so this girl, she began to follow them day after day after day after day. And finally, Paul, being grieved in his spirit, he turned around and he cast that spirit out of that girl. He, boy, I tell you, Paul, Paul's a bad man, I tell you. He cast the spirit out, just being grieved in his spirit. But the text goes on to say, but when her masters saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they went and got Paul and Silas, and they captured them, and they threw them in the courtyard. They brought them before the mattresses and, 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 and they began to beat them. The charges that was against them was, uh, they said that they were teaching customs that were not lawful. And so in the courtyard, they began to do three things. The first thing was they, they tore their clothes off. That's humiliating. The text says they begin to beat them with many stripes. And then thirdly, the text says, and they threw them into the inner prison. Now, now it's one thing to be in prison, but it's another thing to be in the inner prison. So they threw them, not just in prison, but they were in the inner prison. And then they placed a charge on the jailer to keep them safely. And, and, and the charge for the jailer was, listen, if they get away, it's going to cost you your life. So you know he's going to do everything that he can to make sure that they do not escape. So look at the circumstances now. The cir look at the circumstances. Number one, they were humiliated by all of their clothes being torn off in a public place. Number two, they were beaten with many stripes. Number three... They were thrown not just in prison, but into a, to an, an inner prison. And then they were given charge to a jailer to watch them so that they would not escape. If you ask me, it seemed like they were in a hopeless situation. But the very next verse in the text, <laughs> glory to God, it says, at midnight... Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. What did they do at midnight? They didn't complain. They didn't cry the blues. They didn't fall into depression. They weren't filled with anxiety. They weren't saying, God, I thought you loved me. Why will you allow this circumstance to come my way? They did not say, why do I have to deal with this problem, with this trouble? No, that's not what the testimony is. The testimony of the text says, and at midnight they prayed and sang praises to God. My God, my God. What did they do at midnight? They prayed and they sang Praises to God. See, I want you to understand that midnight is the darkest hour before daybreak. Remember that. Midnight is the darkest hour before daybreak. And, and, and the only thing I want you to know about midnight is that, watch this now. One second after midnight, we call it morning. E even though it's still dark outside, but one second after midnight, we call it morning. And, and why, why do we call it morning uh, one second after midnight? It's because, it's because uh, it cannot get any darker. You know, at 11.59 p.m. and then 12 midnight, 
we call it 12 a.m. Not p.m., we call it a.m. Why? It's because the night has reached its darkest hour. And now it can only get brighter. And so one second after midnight, my God, becomes the a.m. Hallelujah. One second becomes the a.m. Because from that particular point, um, every passing moment, it can only get brighter and brighter and brighter. Yes. So we use the word midnight as a metaphor to describe the intensity of our trials. And, and somebody that I'm preaching to right now, you may be facing your midnight. 8 o'clock p.m., you've lost your job. 9 o'clock p.m., you're running out of food. 10 o'clock p.m., you're feeling sick in your body. 11 o'clock p.m., things seem to be getting worse. And the question becomes, how worse can it get? But the good news is, my God, my God, the good news is there is only 60 seconds between midnight and daybreak. <laughs> I want you to understand what I'm saying now. Yes, there's only 60 seconds between midnight and daybreak. And the second, one second after midnight, you got, you got, you got, you got 60, 60 more seconds. And time is changing. You have, in other words, you have already reached your darkest hour. And now things are getting ready to change. It's getting ready to get better. Oh, yes. So, so let's, let's go back to our text now. Because uh, when we left off, they were stripped of their clothes. They were uh, uh, beat with many stripes and they were thrown into an inner prison. And so the question is, what were they doing in the darkest hour of the night? What were they doing in the darkest hour of the night. And the text says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God and the prisoners heard them. I wonder why the text took out, I know, you know, it says that they they, they prayed. We understand that. And they, uh, they they sang praises. I know that. But why, why would the text take out time to say, and the prisoners heard them? Because you can't be ashamed to lift up your voice. Lift up, lift up your voice, O ye gates, and the king of glory shall come in. Don't be ashamed to open your mouth and praise God in the midst of your midnight. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They prayed. They sang praises. And the prisoners heard them. I will lift up my voice. Yea, I will sing praises to the most high. Hallelujah. That's one of the best times for you to pray and, and praise. Pray and praise. Pray and praise. is in the midnight seasons of your life. Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. You know, when you look at the news, the doctor's they're, they're reminding everybody that when you leave your house, make sure you have your PPE. And uh, I, I, when I first heard that, I had asked my wife, what are they calling PPE? <laughs> and, and the PPE is, is your, uh, your proper uh, protective equipment. Your proper protective equipment, your PPE. And, and, I, and I agree, I think you should have your PPE. But you need to have your spiritual PPE as well. And that is your prayer, your praise equipment. 
Don't leave home without it. Because I want you to know the Bible says all things through prayer and supplication, making your request known unto God. I, 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 listen, I believe that God is a prayer answering God. Now, let me say something. Because sometimes people believe. Now, now and I, I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm getting ready to say now. Because, well, let me, let me, add, let me put it this way. Has God ever answered every prayer that you've ever prayed? Think about that for a moment. And, and if, you, if, you, if you're really honest with me, you'll have to say, no, God has not answered every prayer that I pray. But, but you pray believing that God is going to do it. You have to. Now, I'm going to say, well, that sounds confusing. Why should I pray believing that God is going to answer my prayer if he's not going to answer my prayer? Well, first of all, he knows what I don't know. But you pray believing. And this is what I've learned from my own personal experience, is that when I pray, believe in God to answer my prayer, and if God chooses not to answer my prayer, God will do one of two things. He will either deliver me from it or give me the grace to go through it. Oh, bless God. And either way is victory. See, 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 so, so, so what I'm saying is uh, if you're praying and asking God to deliver you from a storm, but he chooses to walk with you through the storm, isn't that still victory? <laughs> oh, my God, my God. And so, God, whether you deliver me from the storm or walk with me through the storm, as long as I know that you're with me, I know I'm going to be all right. That's all it matters. And then in verse number 26, now I want to show you something too. In verse number 26 of our text, it says, it says, it says and suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors, my God, were open and their bands were loose. There's two words in that text I want to show you. The first word is suddenly. And the second word is immediately. Suddenly and immediately. I want you to know that's just how, that's just how God can move. Suddenly. He'll turn things around. And that's why you got to keep on praying. That's why you got to keep on singing to God. Because God, amen, he'll turn things around. Oh, yes, Lord. And I know you may say, Pastor, I hear what you're saying. But you're not going through what I'm going through. You're not experiencing loneliness, depression, anxiety. And you got to learn how to lift up your voice and sing in this season. I don't care how bad things look. I don't care how bad things appear to be. You got to sing to God. And so say, well, but I don't know what to sing. Well, I'll give you a song to sing. Sing Psalms number 27, verse number one. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom Shall I be afraid? Yeah. Sing that. Sing that. The Lord is my light. And my salvation, the Lord is my light. And my salvation, the Lord is my light. And my salvation, who shall I fear? My God, you walk around your house singing Psalms 27 verse 1. And put it in the atmosphere. Or you can sing Psalms chapter number three, verse number three, where he says, But thou, O Lord, my God, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. My God. Yeah, you can sing that. But thou, O Lord, 
art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. Yes. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. You can sing that. Psalms 3 and 3. Sing it to God. My God. <laughs> but I hear some of you right now. Say, yeah, Pastor. But what do I do if I can't sing? <laughs> But the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Even if you can't sing, listen, you're home by yourself or just around your family. You sing anyhow. Even if you can't sing, make up your own melody. You, matter of fact, go to Psalms 91 and verse number two, and you sing that. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Just, just, just make up a make up a melody. I will sing of the Lord. He is my refuge. <laughs> he is my fortress. My God. And will I trust? No matter. <laughs> it don't matter. Make up your own melody because God hears your heart. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the darkest hour before daybreak. Yes, Lord. And I want you to know, amen, that daybreak is coming. And the Bible says in Psalms 96, verse number one, he says, sing unto the Lord a new song. And sing unto the Lord, all ye earth. And I want you to know that what you do at midnight will determine your daybreak. Yes, Lord. And I want you to know that your daybreak is coming. Oh, yes, it is. I know when you look around the world and you hear the news and see everything that's going on, it looks very, very bad. It looks devastating. But we serve a good God. We serve an awesome God. And I'm not just going to sing when I'm on my mountaintop. But I'm going to sing when I'm in my valley. I'm not just going to sing when things are going well. But I'm going to sing when things are turned upside down. Because I know that the God that we serve is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you can ask. Amen or thing. Oh, my God, my God. The darkest hour. The darkest hour. It may be dark in your life right now, but I want you to know that God is getting ready to turn things around for your life because he's just that kind of God. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. And so I want you to be encouraged today. I want you to be inspired today. Paul and Silas was in an inner dungeon and they could have just given up. But instead of doing that, they, they, they decided that I'm going to stand. I'm going to pray. And I know sometimes it's hard to sing. It's hard to pray when life seems uncertain. When things seem to be turned upside down. But you got to trust God in the midst of your darkest hour. Stick with it. Stay close. This, this is the time to be to get closer to God than you've ever been. Because God is able to sustain you through these troubled times. Oh, I heard it in my spirit. The darkest hour 
before daybreak. One day I looked outside. It was midnight. But it was morning. <laughs> it was morning. It was still dark outside. But as I opened the blinds, eventually I start seeing the sun come over the horizon. Even in your darkest hour, the sun is still shining. And God is shining down on you right now. And I want you to know that you're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. It may be dark in your life right now, but child of God, front line, you know what I always say, put a clap in your hands, put a dance in your feet, and put a praise on your lips. Because God is going to get you through. In the name of Jesus. Do you believe that? If you believe that, type amen. <laughs> Just type amen if you believe that. Hallelujah. I want to pray. I want to pray two prayers. Now, I want to, first I want to pray for anyone who's having a difficult time through this season. It may be because you've been affected in a very negative way. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you lost a friend. Maybe you've been affected personally. Maybe your finances are low. You've been laid off your job. I want you to know that none of those things are your source. God is your source. And he promised that he would supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your comforting spirit but touch the hearts of your people and that you are blessed in right now in the name of Jesus. Show yourself mighty and show yourself strong in their lives. And we thank you in advance for what you've already done. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, for those of you that are not saved, you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to pray for you. I want to lead you to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Christ from the dead, he says, thou shalt be saved. And if you're not saved, come on, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. Come into my heart. Forgive me for everything that I have done wrong. I receive you, Jesus, into my life as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, God, for saving me. I am saved. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer, you just got saved. And that's all that matters. Now, you need to study the Bible, read the Bible, start a prayer life, and grow spiritually. And when this pandemic is over, find yourself a good church home where you can fellowship with the saints. The Bible says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. The Bible says, forsaken not yourselves, over seven together. If you're anywhere near the Dover area, Delaware, we'd love to have you to come and fellowship with us. God has changed your life. And we praise God for it. Bless the name of Jesus. And listen, the Lord put this in my spirit earlier this morning. He said, many of you who are listening to me, you're not going to church anywhere. You haven't been going to church. And whatever the reason is, that really does not matter. But listen, I want to invite you to be a part of our church family. 
even if you're out of state and you're not going to church anywhere, be a part of our online church family and join us here every Sunday at 10 a.m. But it's important that you connect with a group of people because that encourages you, it strengthens you, it helps you. If you want to be a member of Frontline Ministries of our church here in Dover, Delaware, whether you're out of state or listening to me right now, if you want to be a part of our virtual e-church, online church, I want you to email me your information and we'll send some correspondence to you. Email it to Norman Hutchins at yahoo.com Norman Hutchins at yahoo.com and we'll respond to your request. All right, well, listen, I want to say to the Frontline family, you know, I know it's still kind of rainy outside. I don't know if it's raining right now. I can't really tell. But we have something special planned today. We call it the Roll Call Drive-By. I haven't seen you guys in, what, this is seven Sundays. I haven't seen you. I ran into a few of you, you know, at the store, but I haven't seen, I haven't seen the congregation. And so we're doing a roll call drive-by today. And what that is, is my wife and I, we're going to be at the church in the parking lot in our vehicle. And we're asking you to drive by. Come drive by. Ten, well, we'll be there at 3 o'clock this afternoon from 3 to 4. This afternoon at 3. From 3 to 4, the deacons have the lot set up where you can come in and drive around, roll your windows down. And we, of course, we'll get out and we'll just wave at you. And, and I'll be praying for you as you drive by. And it'll be good to see you. But I got a, I got a surprise too now because for the 100th car <laughs> that comes through the lot, I got a special, special, y'all know how I do it. I got a special gift, a special surprise for the 100th car that comes through the parking lot. All right? And so, listen, let's get together this afternoon at 3 p.m in the parking lot so we can say hello to all of you because it's been a long time since I've seen you. Don't forget now, join us this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. for our Bible study. We are doing Journey Through the Bible. And I've been getting some good feedback, good response. Many of you are just loving it because you've never had the opportunity to study the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Right now we're in the creation stage and then we're going to go to the patriarchal stage and the exodus stage and the conquest stage and so on and so on. Twelve stages that will take us through the Bible. And so we're taking our time. So this Tuesday night at 7 p.m., we're going to be in the third division of the creation stage. All right. And uh, so it's going to be awesome. So please uh, do that. And uh, the Lord's going to bless you in doing so. To our frontline family, I want to thank you so much for your financial support. For supporting the kingdom of God through your tithe and your offerings. We have two ways of giving. That's Givelify and then, of course, Cash App. And uh, that information is on your screen. You, on the screen, you can uh, type that in. And, and, uh, and so, you have, you have blessed your church so that we're able to do what we're doing in this season. You know, we, we, you know it was brought to our attention that there were some homeless uh, families that we were able to help. Mothers with babies. My God, that just, it breaks your heart to know that a, a mother who would just have a baby, but, but they're homeless and have nowhere to live. Nothing, nothing, nothing to give. But you reached out. Many of the departments in our church reached out. The church was able to help because of your giving. In our community, in our school district, we're able to give um, uh, gift cards for food to help supply food for the families in this season. And so Frontline, thank you so much for your faithfulness and sowing and sharing and for helping to keep the ministry afloat and helping us to continue to do what God has called us to do. We love you and we praise God. Amen for your faithfulness. So anyway, so until this afternoon at 3 p.m. at Frontline Ministries in the parking lot, the roll call, drive by. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you, all right? <laughs> so God bless you on the behalf of myself, Lady Karen Hutchins, 
Assistant Pastor George Chambers, all of the members of the church, and to all of you, my uh, social media family, we love you. We thank God for you. Continue to be blessed. And remember, remember, the darkest hour before daybreak. It may be dark, but daybreak is coming. God bless you. Get ready.